Hello, Hagni. Hi, hi. So nice to see you again in Estonia. Absolutely. Very glad to be here again. Well, it's like uh, we, third time, fourth time? To, for me personally, to Estonia? Um, I would say fourth time. Um, yeah, fourth time, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And now you are presenting yourself. It's your solo project, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, so, but I have to ask, uh, you have done so many different collaborations. You have, you have uh, Hachel, ha, Hachelin? Yeah, yeah ha exactly, yeah. Hachelin, yeah, yeah. And then you have uh, Gaskas, mm -hmm. uh, this long period. Mm -hmm. Then you had also some different projects in the theater, even movie, mm -hmm. uh, music, and uh, then also uh, fashion collaborations. And how you cope with that? And uh, don't you afraid to lose focus? Well, um, I mean, I suppose it's a part of, um, I guess, you know, as a 20-year-old as a or 25 or 27-year-old, you're kind of eager to, um, well, at least me, musically, you know, I, I'm very obsessed with music. I, I, I'm all, all the time um, um, with my, my, my mind and my, um, my focus on music. Um, and as a musician, um, I was always interested in, in, in every aspect of it. Um, I started my, my own band, Hjaltalin, which was kind of came out of this, um, indie, indie rock kind of world, 2002, three, four, we, I was very much into yeah, indie rock was kind of the thing. So it's like Icelandic, some national music, something also, or is it like? Well, I don't. I wouldn't say so. No, mm -hmm. I would. No, I mean it's pop music. It's songwriting, mm -hmm. but it's it has all these orchestral instruments. So we had a bassoon and we had a clarinet, and we had cellos, and then we we kind of developed into this more orchestra classical thing. And then after a little time, we we really made that really big and famous. And and um, and after a while, uh, I was kind of looking out for something new, and I was composing. For for theater, and then Gus Gus came along, and it was my favorite, you know, one of my favorite bands as a growing up. But they were in a period where they were looking for something new, and me as well. And by accident, I met you know, one of the producers, and we made a lot of songs together. And, and they became a part of this album, Arabian Horse. And from there, I started touring with them, and all of a sudden, I was a lead singer and frontman of the band. And I spent five years touring the world with Gus Gus. And, and during that time, I, I my focus was. You know, I, I wanted to do everything, and I did everything. I was doing, you know, art installation and theater, and Hjaltalin was uh, making also some stuff. But 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 at a certain point, I I understood that um, to take care of, better care of myself, both personally but also um, musically, I I um, wanted to to focus on a new thing, and that was my solo project. You did uh, say in one interview that uh, this Cascos thing, it's like swallowed you, mm. so you kind of lost yourself. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what happened? Well, that's like, I mean, that's like, I, I'm, I'm just open about it, I suppose, um, and, and speak honestly about it, because it's, it was just a period in my life where, where, um, where I, I um, enjoyed a good, good time a good lifestyle and um, the music was about um, enticing people, getting people motivated and ambitious and their emotions raveling and it was a big, we did big shows and people were dancing so a lot of energy, it was all about energy I suppose, making big big energy and um, maybe I put a lot of and not too much of my own energy in it and um, because also I, I um, developed this condition, this mental condition called bipolarism, bipolar, and it's a it's a it's a very pretty common mental mental health condition. Um, a lot of people have it and have have dealt with it, both uh, artists and and intellectuals and and, and uh, you know it's it's quite common. Mm -hmm. It it means that you 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 either very depressed or you're very elevated. Your mood is like oh my god, the world is so rich and fantastical. And um, anyway, it's a it's a thing that you gotta gotta you know medicate and you gotta keep it balanced and that kind of stuff. So, so through that, um, the lifestyle of touring and doing big shows was you know 
getting pretty bit on my you know yeah, on my it's, it's a nightlife also exactly yeah, a nightlife yeah. and you know the mm. parties and all that mm. stuff so you know the net your kind of neural network is kind of like under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. but also you know just uh, on another side um it was also about you know my love for music and my love for craft mm. and composition and and that sort of thing um because i'm a i'm a, I'm a nerd basically I'm a, i'm a music nerd and and i come from a very musical family also yeah 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 musical family and i love you know classical music and and i kind of left that part in composition and that part and and that meant i i was lacking something so i mm -hmm. i figured after five years i figured i i need to um, change my game and and the guys we we, we had come um we had a good had a good period and we needed a change and we just came to an agreement that that, that was it was a time and and it was a uh, you know it was a bit hot you know you, you change an environment you're touring around the world and you quit and then you gotta develop and adapt to a new thing and and you know my thing was you know in a good way because I I was working on a solo album and then I found um, um, good partners to release the music did that last year and now I'm focusing on music which is dear to me which is um, yeah. But you, know. you, you took President Pongo with you, yeah? Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. One, one good, good thing also. Yeah, <laughs> we, we kind of that, broke yeah, broke out curious. of Glasgow and we... I mean, I guess the music is different, you know, it's like we mm. wanted to... It's, it's basic, we wanted mm. to do artistically different things. Mm -hmm. He has a he has a world of his own, which he couldn't find mm -hmm. it properly in his band, Glasgow, because, the, you know, the, there's so much... Leaders, I think. Yeah, like yeah. four leaders, you know. Yeah, if you yeah. if you got four mm -hmm. testosterone yeah. leaders, like it's it's a, it's a it's a you know band culture, I suppose. But but it's it's a tricky one. Yeah, tricky one to keep uh, all talented people together. And it is always level, yeah. yeah, and now that's what makes bands so interesting. You know, mm -hmm. that's why we love good bands because it's a it's a synergy like this elements of yeah you definitely have this energy together with Casca so I hope you someday you get together to this kind of concerts like uh, uh, 20 years after or something it's like possibly, that possibly yeah I mean of course we <laughs> might we might yeah. we might do it and and me and Daniel for example are very good friends yeah, we, yeah. we talk a lot and and, mm. and and uh, me and Steppy, Steppy left the band. He was like, "Fuck you." Mm, yeah, um, yeah, it's hard yeah. decision, but you had to for, for think of yourself. And exactly. Your health. Yeah. Exactly. So. Health and also my artistic. Yeah. Yeah. Growth. You know, growth yeah. and vision. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I sometimes when I'm asked about it, I sometimes talk about the story of Pinocchio. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's a good uh, how to say synonym. Yeah. This kind of uh, period. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because you kind of go into a new world and you. I mean, like Pinocchio joins the circus, and and he's um, everybody tells him you're gonna be great, Pinocchio. They're gonna love you so much, mm -hmm. and Pinocchio gets like, oh, his ego built up, and like, yeah, I wanna, I want them to love me. I want everybody to love me. And then he joins the circus, and you know he, that kind of the circus imprisons him, and he has to perform every night and you know make money for the circus, mm -hmm. and like he's there and ah, da 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 da. And, and ends up and, and as, a, as a donkey. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, That's so funny. He goes yeah. to the pleasure island. You know, it yeah. ends up in the pleasure island, which is, of course, mm -hmm. you know, what we all share, which, which is, you know, what the good things in life and vanity, for example, is a part of it. And, and, and um, you know, um, champagne, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, and um, but if you, if it, but that's the nature of the ego. If it builds up and builds up and you think of these things, um, you might turn into a donkey like Pinocchio. I don't. I'm not saying I turned into a donkey, but it's a it's a story that I kind of think about a little bit. Like you, mm -hmm. you know, I I was in that world of of you know. I, temptations, you know, temptations always yeah. kind of a uh, uh, little bit like putophorical effects also. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And burning yourself in a, burning in a yourself, physical way. Yeah, yeah. performing, mm -hmm. making that party, yeah. keeping that party going. You have to pay for that. Yeah, eventually. yeah. You, you gotta pay for it. Yeah. And I and I mm -hmm. definitely did that on a personal level and. And I decided to be outspoken about it, and and I suppose that's because people were very aware, and Icelandic society is a very small one, so mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. just things don't really um, uh, kind of yeah, yeah you cannot just, hide them. Yeah, you it's, cannot. It's, hide, it's kind of open there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But same in Estonia. Also, yeah, I suppose. Small circle. I yeah. can imagine that. And you know. media really uh, wants to write about something, and especially 
about this kind of things. Yeah. But what but the good point also I found uh, uh, from your last interview was that you uh, discovered sport again. Oh yeah. So you kind of meditate with your trainings and, and that that's very good. Yeah, know. it was a good this period. One me- how to say medicine. <laughs> for sure, yeah. for uh-huh. sure. And I've got a lot of experience in this field, you know, how to what it, you need to be to be stable, what how it is to to kind of go through this this um it's hard. It's a hard one. A lot of people get, you know, get trailed away from life and, and get a, a bit bad situation. I'm luckily I, I worked on it through different different methods and I I'm, I feel fine. You know, I'm I'm a good in good balance. Of course, melancholic like everybody else, I suppose. But that's also me as an artist. I'm a mel- melancholic artist. Um, but I I truly I just admire music and and beauty and and I and I and I love to um, dwell and investigate theoretical subjects about creativity about ev- you know human evolution mm-hmm. also my album the last album is a kind of a conceptual album in a way that it 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 um envelopes an idea about a progress mm-hmm. so so uh that's also a, a you know thing for me I, I i love going into these subjects but but at the moment i'm writing a film score for example mm-hmm. and you know that gives me a lot of pleasure like just um uh, writing music for strings and kind yeah. of basic like just the classical elements uh, very so calming and, and yeah uh, that's calming and it gives me satisfaction you know because mm-hmm. the, what gives me satisfaction and what keeps me not frustrated is to create and to make and i think that's i think that's a universal issue for everybody yeah, i think it is. i think we as a human people we humans <laughs> humans well that's what we need to do we need to create we need to build us build a, a, um, a vibrancy around us we need to if we if we don't find a way to create stuff and to make stuff around us and create the environment that's the communicate Mm -hmm. and exactly communicate and create um new ideas and even through communication publishing all that stuff Mm -hmm. um you're you're creating ideas and you're making um i guess you're transforming life in a way and that's that's i suppose we as a species are unique in that way we want to transform our surrounding and uh, I, I uh, just uh, caught myself in a thought that you are really sensitive person and as a creator, as, a, as an artist, and maybe that's why you have this up and downs mm-hmm. because you care about the, you know, whole humankind, mm-hmm. uh, but surround us, you know, all this economical growth and uh, people are consuming so much and mm-hmm. uh, you can see lots of things are not right, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe you are like fighting that and you don't know how to do it <laughs> yeah. and then you do one thing and yeah. you do other thing and 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 i think that this classical musical kind of stuff is uh, very good for people to calm down this madness you know all this kind of but uh, what's around us yeah yeah, yeah I, I believe so as well i think um i think uh i think so i think this calming aspect of I mean, like you guys know i mean i mean estonians are at the forefront of that mm-hmm. wave you know we you have, um, I mean, it's a, it's a Very fashionable. Exactly. I mean, I mean, basically, Arvopert is being copied around the world all the time. Mm. Like, like in movies, Western movies, is copied Arvopert. You know, and, and I, I'm at a label which, which, um, you know, creates this contemporary avant-garde kind of music, which is calm and still. All the composers there are looking into Arvopert. So, so I think Estonia, for example, is a, is definitely a place where the world looks at. You know, as, as in terms of calm and sensitivity and stuff like that maybe you know it's not so apparent and famous and and you know it's not in the but it's like through art and through these ideas that you're talking about it is there you know so 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 that's that's interesting but uh, do you uh, kind of uh, also influence uh, the Icelandic economy or politic political life or do you get involved in this social life and, and political life well um in a way, in a way, I don't do it. I don't do it um, directly. Um, I do it. I do it. Uh, of course, I think art and, and music is a political power, but perhaps on a on a spiritual level, mm-hmm. um, it it transforms and 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 creates consciousness and um, sophistication in thought and 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 mindfulness towards the community. And I think good art and progressive art does that all the time that's why progressive art and, and creativity is, goes hand in hand with a good society I believe that that's why I do what I do um, 
I, 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 I guess I, I'm there only as a. I mean, I, in Iceland, basically, I'm the half. Of, I don't know. I'm, I'm everybody's friend. You know, I, I, I'm a friend of the. The, the, the controversial prime minister and I'm a mm -hmm. friend of the mayor and mm -hmm. I talk to the intellectuals I talk to the street so so I'm kind of I live in downtown and it's a small society so so I just I kind of like just to uh, be there and, and see of ourselves as a family mm -hmm. and we sometimes we are arguing and there's a growing um, you know um, imbalance between the rich and the poor mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. Uh, still, we're doing pretty good, and we 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 the, there is not a lot of poverty, but still too much. Um, so there, these things you got to fight, and I I don't mind saying that out loud to the prime minister or whatever. Um, I don't write official statements in the papers or do big statuses on my Facebook page or anything like that. But but I think of myself as a um, an artist that wants to communicate the good in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we Estonians look at Iceland uh, very, very, uh, you know, kind of up because you kind of manage to come out of crisis every time, and then you have mm -hmm. a youngest minister, woman, woman uh, minister now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like wow, yeah. And uh, you do this alcohol politics with young people, or some some kind of was uh, action because it was a problem that young uh, young people are in the streets and drinking too much. But it's now true. it's yeah. kind of law or something. They no, no, it's, you're right. That, that's for example, that's a very good. Uh, it was more more like this um, kind of sport uh, centers and and activities made up for young people yeah so it uh, to took them out of streets streets and I, yeah, yeah I, like I mean I saw I saw um, you you do some kind of charity or you do you go to some sign this kind of social group me to me personally yeah yeah I I go to I I work with mental health ah okay mm -hmm. I, I yeah. so I, I that's so you have your experiences you have your yeah I mean I, that's what I've done yeah. mm -hmm. and um I mean it's a it's an it's a sensitive issue for me yeah, of course yeah, and yeah. and I'm working on it my personally but but I have through the years I have I've uh, spoken um, at the conferences and, and talked to uh, talked to uh, groups and institutions about it and and, and I, I I don't mind it I think yeah. it's a I think it's a it's an issue that you know it's important to destigmatize yeah, yeah. I'm making a movie I'm making a documentary mm -hmm. Along with a famous writer and novelist in Iceland, and we went to Nepal, where we um, were, um, yeah, facilitating, creating. I was performing in a in a movement, a new movement for mental health awareness in Nepal, and we we're making a, a movie about the fantastical sides of the mind and also its dark places. And about bipolarism, and also about um, you know how it links with imagination and creativity. And so it's going to be next year, or what I suppose so. They're working on it right now. We, okay. We're not sure when it finishes. When we, when we finish it, we, we'll, we'll try to find a place to. And your new it. album, with two trains, is also about this kind of bipolarity and the, and the different choices and and the, the different paths of the world, or yeah, how you describe it. Yeah, yeah, I would I would say so. I mean. My new album, Two Trains, is about mm -hmm. is about um, progress and about how how um, you know it's a story basically. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a big story about two trains that um, were um, which transported uh, coal and gravel down to the harbor in Iceland, mm -hmm. and they built up um, the harbor in Iceland and. But they're the only two trains that ever surfaced the Icelandic landscape, so we don't have any trains. But there's yeah, only yeah. two trains mm -hmm. there, and they they actually were um, became for me and my lyricist a, a, a metaphor, a, a symbol for a Renaissance in mm -hmm. Iceland, mm -hmm. and for how the city was being built up. And it, and this was hundred years ago, so at this time. Also, before these two trains came along, I was thinking about this idea about how, at, at the turn of every century, there is a big breakthrough in the society, and um, uh, and I knew that that happened hundred years ago with you know World War One and 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 the, the 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 musical landscape become a became a um, an image of that you know you could detect it in the musical language and see how 
music and art was um, projecting this mm-hmm. predicting predicting this exactly yeah. predicting mm-hmm. a certain this so this change in the air the, the changes and the then the and danger danger of things exactly and, exactly yeah. exactly and that's mm-hmm. the danger and, the, and so 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 I felt that for sure for me for you know, t- eight seven years ago when I started the album I felt that that was what was happening you know we we 2011 2012 2011 there is a a breakthrough about to mm-hmm. happen and there's some changes going to be made for this century and it's it's manifesting right now and um and you know seven years later there's uh you know definitely the environment is so different mm-hmm. it's a different environment in terms of technology and the media and how um you know people can be manipulated and yeah uh, exactly this artificial life can be more important and important uh, exactly exactly you're right that's yeah. right mm-hmm. um and it's becoming very apparent and people are becoming noticeable about it so it's a it's going to change a lot like and everybody's in everybody this subject is becoming almost uh, not fashionable but it's becoming very open mm-hmm. people are aware of, aware of like how where are we where are we heading where are we heading um of course there's this um turbulence and dangers between um uh, the big superpowers like yeah like yeah basically it's it's pretty all pretty um yeah pretty interesting but but i i suppose when i'm well when i was making this album i i i wanted to to pinpoint mm-hmm. that and um uh, but do it through a a, a like a, a fictional method mm-hmm. because i think politics in a way um are are um they're 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 the efficient <laughs> i heard this um expression about the the united kingdom and how the kingdom monarchy was built up and how you know how th- this is idea about um uh the efficient which mm-hmm. is the government and the administration mm-hmm. and how efficiently you can create a good society but then at the at the other side of efficiency there's the dignified mm-hmm. which i think is a good way good a very um interesting parallel you know the dignified which is the the elusive which is the ideals that we uphold mm-hmm. it's uh, like uh, you believe in god or not yes you believe you in, stigmatize things or not or, but, but but you do yeah you believe in what is what is right and what is just and what is beautiful mm-hmm. but then you got to be efficient about how you build the world around that but i think the two things are very vital for each other the dignified and the efficient that was pretty smart i read that somewhere and now i feel everything is a little bit like shaking yeah this royalty things and all this kind of uh, oh, for sure. you know kind of uh, costs and uh, levels and people are more kind of uh, how to say democratical in in their souls not just in the you know written somewhere or yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. This, it, absolutely there's mm-hmm. more uh, push for for democracy for for just life and mm-hmm. for for equality equality yeah. equality is mm-hmm. a very important thing and, and i think if 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 it's being pushed all the time it will happen yeah um talking about technology and how about the art- artificial intelligence as you mentioned i was a and i'm obsessed by story stories and storytelling and and fantasies and adventures like you were mentioning pinocchio um there's a the 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 famous adventure and story of the sorcerer's apprentice which um mickey mouse made famous in a film oh, okay where we remember this this was um in Fantasia the Mickey Mouse becomes the apprentice for a sorcerer a, a witch a, um a, a sorcerer who, who makes magic yeah 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 and yeah, like shaman or something yeah yeah it's like a, a witch it's, a, it's a medieval uh-huh. medieval sorcerer with okay. a hat like that mm-hmm. yeah. and um and the sorcerer sorcerer um he he leaves the the laboratory the the magic laboratory and and says to Mickey Mouse to the apprentice it's a, it's a it's a story by Goethe Goethe, Goethe the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the German guy um and anyway um he leaves and says clean up the place i'm going out for a little while you got to clean up and and the apprentice um you know he's a bit scorned by that bit you know depressed about um cleaning up but he he he, he thinks of an idea he thinks about going into the the sorcerer's um book of mm-hmm. spells and to figure out if he can find a spell that can help him clean up the place so he doesn't have to clean up himself and and um 
he of course um, finds a spell where he can duplicate the the wands the, the what, what's it called the the mm -hmm. the, the, oh, yeah, the, to clean up the, the, the thing here brush, brush. brushes mm -hmm. yeah exactly he, he, fi he finds a spell where he can double double every every brush and to to help him out with um, you know instead of one brush he can have a lot of brushes mm -hmm. and that makes the things faster and he doesn't have to do any, anything um, so of course this this uh, spell gets um, he can't handle the spell it's too big for him he doesn't have the the, the the intellect to to uh, control the whole thing so the 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 brushes become doubled and doubled and doubled and and they become to find uh, and, and 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 get water from the well um of course that ends up as a catastrophe a, a hazard uh, water everywhere and everything goes up to shit and the sorcerer comes back to the home and everything is in in flames and he lifts his wand and um you know, handles the whole situation, but I. So it's a nice story. To I think, think so. About. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and I think yeah. it, it it actually it's a two hundred year old story mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. You know, even older probably. But yeah. I think it tells a tale about you know us humans creating stuff, creating, mm -hmm. but then ultimately we lose uh, control of it. Yeah. And I guess this is very um, apparent now with the uh, so with the technology and artificial intelligence. Yeah. Stuff. But it's like going, going is like a snowball. You cannot like really stop it it's like growing somehow bigger and bigger and no yeah uh, you can't stop it yeah and because of the yeah. capitalist um environment it's it's it's, it's, it's like futile built up so yeah. it's futile yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you just, but what, you just watch it and cry so we, we just do <laughs> cheers champagne. champagne yeah yeah <laughs> so, watch it and cry let's go a little <laughs> bit uh, more funnier and uh, and nicer topics uh, what about fashion i know you are really like um, having your own style and mm -hmm. uh, how you get your uh, ear, this performing clothes um, I I I, uh, I like to talk to and work with um, designers. Mm -hmm. Icelandic designers. Yeah, or? mostly as Icelandic mm -hmm. designers. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, those are uh, very close to me, and they. Uh, yeah, I talk to designers, and and we, you know, custom make something. Maybe a, I don't know some vest and some you know. I remember when first when I joined Cascos, for example, it was um, I I played around with that. I talked to a lot of people and got some good clothes and good accessories and one of those were like gothic like leather straps which kind of had a, mm -hmm. a kind of a little bit of a um a bondage kind of feel yeah, to it yeah, yeah. like a little bit sadomaso sadomaso kind of gothic and the gothic kind sadomaso together, and stuff yeah, yeah. And, and, and that was a little bit viking time a little bit yeah, yeah. and then yeah. i remember i went on stage with gus because it was the first time and it was kind of like whoa what mm -hmm. was Huckney wearing is it? It's not the same uh, cute outfits that he's been wearing. Mm -hmm. but, so I remember it, at at that point I felt ah I'm gonna because also I'm grow up I grew up you know fashion oriented. Mm -hmm. I, I as a kid I was very obsessed with fashion. I suppose kids are that you know the teenagers really are into style and they they are very creative with style and you can always detect a new style by looking at the younger generation and that kind of stuff. Um, and I was I was very into that because I was investigating different styles. But um. But yeah, so 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 I was always into it. But I suppose the style that I grew up in was was very cute. You know, we in my school in my generation, we it was all about retro, um, 70s kind of um, secondhand kind of thing. Um, no Gucci. No Gucci, Gucci. no design, <laughs> nothing like that. Uh, cheap, you know, stuff. Now I I, I don't really want to wear that secondhand stuff because. I really like to wear the um, designer stuff, you know. Yeah, custom made. Something, custom yeah. made, and I like to have a vision, and I'd love to find a designer that makes a, a unique cut and unique stuff. But, but yeah, so I so I still I still love to fa to buy fashion, not as much as I did, but. And I you know. did some modeling too, yeah, for some fashion shootings and so on. Yeah, yeah, I've done I've done a bit of that, but uh, mostly I've um, I've said no about it, but um, mm -hmm. but I have I have done it. 